Hey there! Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Hi, today in my bench I have this Pioneer Hi-Fi system. Now the model number of this unit and it is written in here and also in the back cover it is the KH-818. The owner of this unit and as he said he doesn't use the radio tuner or the cassette uh, player inside of this unit he only used this unit as an amplifier and he connect uh, his mobile phone to the AWAX jack of the unit in order so he can listen to the music through it. The other day and as he said he turned it on and it worked for almost two minutes and then it stopped working. So today, in this video, we are going to tear down this unit, uh, test it, see what's wrong with it, and see how we are going to repair it. Let's get started. Now, before I start the tearing down process, I'm going to test the condition of the uh, keys and the switches in the unit. And we are going to start with the uh, tuning uh, knob and if I just turn the tuning knob with my fingers we can see that the needle it is stuck in its place and it doesn't move at all. As for the tuning knob turning it it is a really a uh, hard task to achieve because it is almost stuck so yeah. In here we have the band selector switches and they seems okay and none of them seems to be broken. As for the uh, FM mode switch we can see that uh, it engage in its place in a really nice way and it works obviously it is working and it is not broken. I don't know the condition inside uh, of each one of these buttons as uh, in terms of the contacts but I'm sure from the corrosion they are dirty as hell so yeah in here we have the uh, loudness uh, switch and it also appears to be working and it is not uh, broken and the same thing it is applied to the volume key it turns and it doesn't appear to be broken. As for the balance, the treble and the bass keys, they are also turning in the correct way and they, they don't look broken. In here we have the function selector switches and this switch it is also working correctly and the same thing it applies to this switch it is also working correctly in here we have the uh, recording level and that is for the uh, tape recorder uh, unit or section it is also working like it should be and it doesn't appears to be broken but I don't know the condition inside of the itself. In here we have the Dolby uh, control, the tape control uh, and also the speaker uh, output control. So yeah. All of these switches they seem okay and none of them it is uh, broken. In here we have the editor switch. I don't know the, uh, the function uh, of this switch but I will uh, take a look at it uh, and examine it after I tear down the entire thing so yeah in here we uh, we have the uh, this switch 
and it is obviously working like it should be and it is for the tape mechanism uh, or the tape section this switch uh, in here or this button it is a pause and it is obviously broken as we can see here is the play and it is stuck in its position the stop button and it is also the eject and as we can see when I push it the uh, door it opens like it should be and the door it doesn't appears to be broken but as we can see it's stuck from a minute ago so yeah or from a second ago the forward and the rewind buttons they appears to be frozen uh, into their places and the same thing it is for the record as well in here we have this broken switch so yeah and here is the power button we can see that it is obviously working so all of the buttons uh, in general they seems okay and none of them seems to be broken except in the uh, tape mechanism uh, the buttons as we saw uh, they are broken so yeah so here's the uh, screws has been removed and in order you can get this uh, cover up and remove it you have to remove uh, two screws from this side and two screws from this side and three in the back and here is the screws that you have to remove them so yeah uh, four, uh, four millimeter size and uh, three, three millimeter size. So yeah. So let me just remove this cover and we will take a look inside. Now, in order you can remove the cover in this model, you have to slide it like so, and then you can lift it up. Now taking a look at the cover itself we can see that it is made from wood and that is really nice and also in this side it has this metal grill that it is installed uh, in it and this grill it allows a, a better cooling for the unit. So let me just pause this video put this cover aside and take a look at the inside of the unit so here's the cover has been removed and once I remove the cover I notice two things immediately the first thing that I noticed that the entire cabinet it is made of metal and that is a really good thing the other thing that I noticed that there is a lot of dust and dirt that it is accumulated in this section of the unit now if we remember when I was removing the back cover we noticed that there is a ventilation grill that it is installed in the back cover and this section of the unit it is beneath that ventilation grill. Now if we examine the inside of the unit we can see that there is three main boards. Now the first board it is in the back we can see that this is the main uh, a board that hold uh, the uh, that this is the board that hold the power uh, circuitry and also the power amplifier uh, circuitry and the power amplifier circuitry it is made uh, of two uh, power ICs and they are installed and secured to this heatsink now if I just zoom in a little bit we can see that these two ICs, they are made by Sanken. I don't know exactly what uh, part number they hold, but we will take a look at the part number of these two ICs once I remove these uh, brackets uh, from their places. Now, if we take a look at this board in here, we can see that this is the uh, radio board and the radio circuitry, it uses the metal type variable capacitor and that is really good. Now near it, we can see that this is where the rod antenna for the middle wave, it is installed. 
Now, whoever designed this or the engineers, they designed this, they installed the band selector switches in this board as well. Now, taking a look at this board, we can see that uh, this is the board where the, uh, the tape uh, circuitry it is designed and installed and also I guess the preamp circuitry it is also installed and taking a look at this uh, switch in here we can see that this is the uh, record a play switch now the next step I'm going to uh, turn this unit around in order so we can examine the front uh, circuitry So here the unit has been turned around and if we examine this section of the unit we notice many things. Now the first thing that we notice that this is uh, where all of the switches and all of the keys that we previously test them they are installed. And if I just zoom in a little bit we can see that all of the switches and all of the keys they have a huge amount of dust and dirt that it is accumulated on them and especially the volume but now with the existence of all of this dust and dirt there is no way that these keys will ever run correctly now if we take a look at the volume pot we can see that this is the uh, the big type volume pot and it has a very uh, industrial type of uh, design and shape and of course it is a dual type volume pot and existed in the same body because usually the volume pot in these uh, devices they it control the left and the right signals now if we examine how the volume pot it is installed we can see that it has its own PC board and also the balance key and obviously the loudness switch they share the same board and that is really nice now as we can see and if we notice that all of the switches and all of the keys they are installed into the cabinet with a metal bracket and that is really nice now if we continue the examination and we move to this section we can see what is this? This is a leaf. Wow. Anyway, uh, we can see that this is where the tuning knob for the radio uh, section it is installed. And the tuning knob or the tuning shaft, it has a, a built-in uh, drum-shaped uh, flywheel so yeah this uh, drum type of fly, uh, flywheel will make the tuning process much more easier for the user now if i just zoom out a little bit and we examine the uh, tuning thread we can see that the tuning thread itself it doesn't look broken but usually from the factory the type of uh, thread that they use it is white this is black uh, probably someone has replaced it and he missed uh, threading it correctly and this is what happened obviously the thread uh, it it is missing the track so yeah now the next step is I'm going to clean up all of this dust and dirt and then we will continue from there. So here's the unit has been cleaned and now as we can see it is very very clean. The next step is to check all of the fuses and all of the boards for faulty or burned or shorted component and then we will try to power on the unit and see if it is going to work or not. 
So I tested all of the component in the unit using the DMM and the VOM meters and the test shows that all of the component in this uh, unit or in these two boards at least they are okay. There isn't anything it is blown or shorted. But when I started testing the uh, this board and this is by the way the power uh, amplifier board and also the power board I noticed that these two fuses they are blown and each one of these uh, two fuses it has the rating of 3 amp and I noticed something really interesting and I'm sure you notice it but I'm going to zoom in a little bit in order so you can see it better I noticed this uh, a black spot in here now it is looks like it is a burned spot and it is directly under the ventilation grill now my diagnostic is that someone spilled something from the uh, ventilation grill and it uh, hit this area and causes a short and probably or may also causes the amplifier to fail now these two fuses they have the place in their place in the circuit is between the uh, secondary uh, winding of the transformer and between the uh, diode bridge rectifier circuitry now the bridge rectifier or the diode brick, uh, bridge rectifier circuitry they deliver the power to these two capacitors and these two capacitors they what supply the power to the uh, these uh, power amplifier ICs so it is typical whenever there is a short uh, in the uh, power amplifier ICs that these two fuses will blow up but testing the condition of these two fuses now where did I put them oh here we go we can see that the uh, the the short was so uh, extend and so intense that it vaporized the uh, the wire inside of these two uh, fuses so yeah My hunch says that one of these ICs, it is blown up. Now the next step that I'm going to uh, try to find the schematic of this unit and then we will proceed from there. So I done some search and I was able to get a schematic of this unit and I downloaded a copy of that schematic on this mobile. Now this is the Sony Xperia uh, E2115. As we can see I hook an external battery to it and also I hacked in a power button to this uh, mobile because the original one it is broken now there will be a complete video about the repairing and the hack process of this uh, mobile and I'm going to post it soon on the journal but for now we are going to use this mobile in order so we can examine the schematic that this unit has so if we turn on the mobile we can see that here is a schematic that I was able to get and it is for the models uh, the KH-8855 and 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 of course it is for the KH-8855 now this is the model uh, that this unit has now if we examine the, the specs that all of these models has we can see if we take a look at this section we can see now the touch in it it is a little bit touchy and I'm sure it needed some work but as we can see the mobile it is apparently working 
So if we take a look at this section, we can see that the uh, models uh, 8811 and the KH uh, 818, apparently they have the same power amplifier circuitry. And they are both uh, rated for 13 watt uh, plus 13 watt in each journal at uh, 20 kilohertz, uh, 1%, THD at uh, 8 ohm and they are rated also for 15 watt plus 15 watt at 1 kilohertz 1 THD at uh, 8 ohm so apparently these two are basically the same so yeah now if we scroll down a little bit and take a look at the rest of the schematic we can see that here is the radio circuitry and there is a, a layout of the PCB or a block diagram of the PCB of the radio circuitry and here is a block diagram of the circuitry and this is for the KH uh, 8855 and if we scroll down a little bit this is uh, for the KH 8811 and apparently the block diagram or the circuitry of the KH 8050 uh, or the 858 and the 818 they are basically have the same uh, schematic for uh, the circuitry or the circuit they have the same schematic circuit diagram so yeah all of these models are basically the same and if we take a look at this section or this uh, part of the schematic we can see here is a uh, the PCB of the radio circuitry and here is the schematic of the radio circuitry unfortunately this uh, schematic only mention the radio circuitry and these models and the it talks or it mentions the turntable wiring and the turntable disassembling uh, process so yeah here is a schematic of the uh, turntable disassembly so this uh, schematic it, it doesn't mention the power amplifier circuitry or the uh, tape player circuitry but if we remember and if we take a look at this section over here we can see that the uh, circuit uh, schematic of the uh, 858 and the 818 they are basically the same so what I'm going to do I'm going to download a schematic for the KH 858 and we will we hope that it can help us in the uh, amplifier circuitry so here's the schematic of the KH 858 and it is for the KH 800 or 8833 and for the uh, 8855 and if we take a look at these two models we can see that these two models they have a built-in turntable into them but the uh, 858 uh, it almost look identical to the 818 so yeah from the outside now taking a look at the specs we can see that the uh, 858 it is rated for 22 watt uh, per journal but the 818 it is rated for 50 watt at the maximum per journal so yeah now if we scroll down a little bit and if we take a look at this section of the uh, schematic we can see that here is a picture of the inside of the unit and it is for the models uh, 8855 and the 8833 and it is also for the KH 
858. We can see from the uh, images or from this image that uh, ex uh, internally uh, there is a huge uh, similarity between these uh, models and the 818 that this model uh, unit has so yeah so my guess uh, is that these units are uh, in terms of the circuitry they are very very close but if we uh, zoom in a little bit uh, and enlarge the image we can see that the difference is in the radio circuitry so here is the picture of the radio circuitry that this model has and this is the uh, 818 as we can see so yeah but if we take a look at the amplifier and the uh, tape uh, player amplifier circuitry we can see that it is almost identical except for this part over here so yeah so anyway let me scroll down a little bit and examine the schematic we can see here is the a block diagram and here is the the way to disassemble the unit here is the way to remove the hinges on the uh, turntable cover there is the way to adjust the bias and the trap and the play uh, tape player circuitry there is the way to adjust the uh, the variable capacitor and also to tune up the uh, radio circuitry and as we can see here is the the correct way to thread the tuning thread as we can see this is very helpful now taking a look at the these chips or these ICs we can see that the they mention in here the S1 uh, or the SI uh, 1125 arch so yeah and here is the circuitry of the 8855 we don't care about that we care about the 858 and this is the 858 and here is the uh, radio circuitry in here here is the uh, tape player uh, op amp and the amplifier circuitry and if I just zoom out a little bit oh the touch in this needed a lot of work apparently so here we go here is the amplifier circuitry and the amplifier circuitry in this unit and it is once again the SI 1125 arch and here is the uh, power amplifier circuitry and we can see that there is a uh, thyristor and it is connected between the positive rail uh, and the negative rail so if the output it is shorted in, in one of these ICs the, uh, the short will activate one of these uh, uh, transistors and one of these transistors will trigger the uh, thyristor and the thyristor will short the positive to the negative and then you will get a blown uh, fuses so like we seen in here or in this unit so yeah wow this is an early protection circuit so yeah 
and its only purpose is just to protect the speakers of the unit. So, yeah. So, apparently, there is uh, a shorted IC, or there is a problem in the uh, amplifier circuitry, like uh, the uh, early examination or the early uh, diagnostic shows. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, remove uh, these two ICs from their places, examine them, and then we will proceed from there. So I remove the two brackets that they hold and secure the amplifier chips to the heatsink and it turns out that both of them they have the part number of SI-1120H. It is quite similar to the SI-1125H that the KH858 has. But this part number, it is designed to produce less power than the 1125 watt. Now, I was going to remove these two ICs and desolder them from the unit in order so I can test each one of them in a test circuit. But it turns out that the bottom of the unit, it is removable and it is held to the cabinet with screws. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave these two ICs in, uh, into their places and I'm going to use the original circuit that the uh, power amplifier has in order so we can see if uh, one of, this, of these two ICs or these two ICs are working or not. So here is all of the screws that hold and secure the bottom cover has been removed and once I remove them you, we can remove this cover easily. So here is the cover has been removed and here is the other sides of the board and as we can see wow the serviceability of this unit it is very very good and the you have a clear access to all of the other sides of the board. So yeah, that is really nice. So what I'm going to do now, as I said, I'm going to uh, test these two ICs into their places in the circuit and we hope that they will work correctly. So I removed and cleaned all of the spilled substance that it was in this area and I tested all of the component using my test gears and everything looks okay. Nothing appears to be blown or shorted. Also I tested the amplifier ICs using my uh, VOM meter and the test it is done by setting the VOM meter to the uh, ohm range and then you can uh, test the resistance between the output pin of the IC and the power rails, the negative and the positive. Now when I tested this IC using the VOM meter, uh, all of the measurement that I took, it was okay and all of the resistance between the positive and the negative rails and the output of this IC, they were good. But when I started testing this IC using the same method, uh, the uh, resistance between the negative and the output of this IC, it was low. So, yeah. So, this tells me that there is a possible problem in this IC. But, in order so I can confirm this, I will have to power on the unit and power on this circuitry uh, specifically, in order so we can check this issue. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to desolder this uh, side resistor from its place and then install two fuses, a uh, 800 milliamp fuses will do the job and then we will see what will happen. So here's the two fuses, the 800 milliamp fuses has been installed into their holders uh, as we see. 
and also uh, I desolder and remove the uh, cyrester from its place in the unit. And here is the cyrester that I desolder and removed. Now the role of the Cyresta in this unit and as we saw when we was examining the schematic of the KH858 uh, it was to short out the uh, AC uh, rails of the transformer after the fuses and also it can cut off the power just in case there is an abnormal voltage coming out of the speaker uh, terminals of the amplifier circuitry. So now what we are going to do, we are going to plug in the power to this unit, power it up, and then we will see what will happen. So here's the power cord has been connected to my current limiting circuit and I'm going to feed it with 200 volt at 1.5 amp at the maximum. And now let's flip the power switch on and see what will happen. So here we go. Power switch it's on and we can see that there is no blown fuses and that is really good. In the front we can see that the uh, bulb for the tuning uh, charter it is light up and that is really good. And also we can see that this LED it is light up and I believe this is for the tape uh, section. So yeah. Now let's... Uh, Turn on the DMM and check some voltages. Now, this is the positive rail and this is the negative rail and let's measure the voltage in the pins of the diode, the bridge cir circuitry and we can see that we are getting 19 volts at 200 volts uh, in the input of the transformer that is really good so yeah. And here is the negative rail and also we have 19.2 volts so yeah this is completely normal. So let's check the temperature there is no abnormal temperature from the uh, two ICs amplifier ICs and that is also really good. So this tells me that the power supply it is working and also the two uh, IC amplifier IC they are not shorted till now so yeah. So let me select the uh, the type of output or let me just connect the the A and B output jacks and let's check the uh, output of each one of these. So here we go, here is the one of the speaker output and this is basically the A output. At uh, this we have 0 0.2 and this is completely normal. At uh, this one, good god, we have 12, 10, who knows, but that is a voltage. Wow. So this tells me that my initial diagnostic that this one has a problem in it. So yeah. So this I see it is apparently gone. Wow. Hmm. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pause this video and check for a substitution of this IC and then I will be back.